Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Well, hi. I think I'm here. Don't say anything. Hi. I'm Renee Kimball, obviously not Bruce Broussard. I'm kind of subbing for him today. And we're going to have a very interesting show for you. It's uh, probably a little controversial. We've already had some interesting comments on the meetup group. A little heated and a little hot. But we do have a very interesting guest tonight, very controversial. And it's Joey Gibson from the Free Speech Rallies. So welcome, Joey. Thank Thanks you very much me. for joining us. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about free speech. Mm -hmm and getting free speech. And if you want to give me the, that for those who don't know who you are, because I know there are a few people who have joined us, can you give us sort of the elevator speech of, you know, the what you guys have started in the past and what happened and where you guys are going to go in the future? Yeah, I mean, uh, basically it just started with me walking the streets with flags and, um, you know, it originated with the Gadsden flag and the American flag. Um, then um, then it kind of turned into going to the Trump flags also. And that's when I started to realize there's a lot of people flipping me off, cussing at me, yelling at me, but a lot of people supporting me too. The motions ran wild. Right. Um, and that's when I started to really understand that there was a free speech issue here, not so much of our government coming in and saying, I'm not allowed to fly those flags. It was more of a cultural thing in terms of... Um, people were led to believe that it was okay to treat me as, as less of a human because I was flying a Trump flag. Right. Um, and that's when I started to become passionate about free speech. And that's when, you know, I threw my, I decided to organize my first rally. I didn't know anybody, didn't know, you know, I was just <laughs> walking the streets by myself um, through my first rally, October 2nd of 2016. It was a Trump rally, but it was focused on political correctness and, and, and about standing up for what you believe in and, and not being afraid to show who you are. Right. Um, so Definitely. that translated to going to different areas, especially the liberal areas, um, um, you know, areas that Portland, Seattle, Berkeley, places like that. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what it turned into. Right. And so I know a lot happened here June 5th, June 4th, 4th excuse mm -hmm. me, was the, the rally here. Now, one, one of the things I'd like to talk to you about is what differences did you see in the rallies here? and the rallies in other cities. Did you see a lot of difference, particularly in who attended? Well, June 4th was kind of different because of the situation in terms of Jeremy Christian, and he, he's the man that murdered the, the two people on the, right. the Max. So that kind of changed things a lot for that rally. Um, so that brought in a lot of people from out of, out of the state or out of the area. Okay. So that right. kind of changed that a little bit, but in terms of the more, nor the, the normal rallies that we have where there's, you know, where there's like 200 people and it's know, pretty much local people that it's attended more, the rallies. you'll get a bunch of people who live along I five, they'll just pop on down. So it's not right. necessarily in Portland, but they'll live, you know, um, close enough to come down yeah, comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. Southern Oregon, Northern Washington, they'll come in, um, the one thing that I noticed, though, in Portland, in terms of the opposition, um, there's a lot less, uh, there's a lot more people that cover their face in Portland. Hmm. When we go into Seattle, it is interesting. When we go into Seattle and stuff, we'll see a lot more, you know, uh, people who don't cover their faces. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. That will, yeah. And so, but then the people who cover their faces, you know, the black bloc, they try to keep us separated from, um, kind of the more moderates, if that makes sense. Um, Do you so. see like that there is a faction that is seems to be cohesive as far as like being more masked, being more aggressive, being more vocal and being more pushy as far as trying to get their way in, in the rallies? Did you see, is that what you're saying that there seemed to be more of here? Not just the fact that there were more people covering their faces? Um... Was there, was there something accompanying that also, rather than just the... Well, that's a good question. Berkeley, see, Berkeley is probably the most aggressive I've seen. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was more organized, and it was more, it looked like it had more funding, it had more money into it. Um, I think that had to do with um, BAM, which is by any means necessary. So that was kind of different. Yeah. That was like, that was, I've never seen anything like that. We're talking hundreds yeah. and hundreds of kids that were willing to 
use violence. Well, um, that's pretty sad. Yeah. That's pretty sad. Um, in Portland, I see more of a group that they are aggressive, but I don't believe that they want, I don't believe in their hearts they want to use violence. I'm talking about the locals. Yeah. They um, just want their energy and they want to, yeah. you know, want things their way, but they don't want to yeah. be aggressively violent. Whereas that's they're something that's They're willing to be violent. Somewhere. They're willing to be violent mm -hmm. against property, <laughs> which yeah, is different, you well, know, different than humans. Yeah, slightly. So that's a slightly. Whole discussion. Slightly um, where I come from. Yeah. Um, and it's <clears> it's the mind. It's only certain, certain. It's not the whole group. It's just certain, certain, certain kids factions, that take advantage yeah. of people covering their faces. Yeah. So, um, but I, I see, I see a lot of. And it's not, I, I call them Antifa all the time just because it's just easier to say that. It's they're actually, it's a group, the anti-racist group is what drives them, you know, anti-fascist. But I see a lot of them that are actually really good kids. Or not necessarily even kids, they're older. But I see, I've talked to a lot of them. And they actually just, they just, they believe in what they're doing. They want something better. Yeah. That's, that's the feeling I get. Yeah. I don't get these, these kids want to go out. They're not destructive. They don't want to go out there and tear things down. They just, Some they're them, so but. desperate to get things different mm -hmm. that they're trying to use you know they've been pushed to the edge and a lot of it has to do with I think that the, a lot of the repression that goes on that they're not allowed to be kids they're not allowed to express themselves and get crazy when they're young teenagers or when they're eight or nine years old they can't mm -hmm. be kids so this kind of gets bottled up and the more you bottle it up they start getting a little bit crazy mm -hmm. now um we did have a, a very short roll in that was called 2081 that i would like to do if we could now and i'd like to give you a little bit of information about that one this is put out by uh one of the films put out short documentary well it's a bergeron film uh, by MPI. They're the sponsors behind a lot of producers who produce these kinds of movies that are um, not very mainstream, that's for sure, and make you think a lot more than a lot of the things that you'll see on TV and even in the movies. And this is a Fleming Rose. Um, this is, oh, geez, wrong. I have the wrong one. Uh oh. I don't think I have any of the information. Hold on. Oh, yes, I do. Yay, team. This is the, the trailer from a film called 2081, and it's a short film adaptation of Kurt Vonnegut's Harrison Bergeron. 2081 depicts a dystopian future in which, thanks to the 212th Amendment to the Constitution and the unceasing vigilance of the United States Handicapper General, everyone is finally equal. The strong wear weights, the beautiful wear masks, and the intelligent wear earpieces that fire loud noises to keep them from talking unfair, taking unfair advantage of their good brains. It's a poetic tale of triumph and tragedy about a broken family, a brutal government, and an act of defiance that changes everything. 2081. It was a real pretty dance, that dance she just did. Huh? That dance, I bet it was nice. Huh? You must be tired. Why don't you stretch out on the sofa so you can rest your handicaps on the pillows? Huh? You're always so warm. If there was just some way we could lighten the rest. Trace the extraordinary. But the 
extraordinary, it seems, was simply out of their reach. Hi, we're back. Hope you enjoyed Term Relative 2081. If you have a very strong constitution, please go to the internet and watch it. It is a very close reminder of what the term equality does and how it makes uh, everybody equal but not very happy. So I'm here with Joey Gibson from the Free Speech Rallies and we're talking about free speech and how can we achieve it and what does it look like and how do we know it when we have it and why are some people so upset that other people aren't saying what they want them to hear. So Joey, we were talking uh, while that the uh, short was on about what Joey was going to plan on doing in the future, and you have some more rallies coming up, I understand. Yeah, August is pretty loaded. Um, we're coming to Portland, August 6th, on the waterfront. Pretty simple, just a so march. So August 6th? Yeah, August 6th, uh, meeting at the fountain, um, 2 p.m. Uh, basically do some marches, some speeches. I know there's a pretty big opposition in terms of uh, the unions came together and they're gonna protest us, which is great. I mean, that's I respect the right to do that. I. I you know, well, what, what, what are the unions protesting? That's what I don't... Okay, I can understand. What you're protesting what for is... Okay, we want things to light, lighten up with it. You know, there's kind of... There's an agenda here. <laughs> We'd like you to stop doing this and maybe do that. But what are they protesting? I don't understand the, this. What they say to the public they're protesting is they say that they're protesting hate. They say hey. they're protesting um, racism, um, uh, marginalizing the LGBT community which is totally false we we literally are gonna have like four transsexuals marching with okay. us <laughs> but have they ever bothered to sort of say okay these are the indicators that this group hates what's Has their it? evidence you mean yeah like what do they say um well the lgbt thing is is what they say is because of the hell shaking street preachers because they go and they protest all the the pride festivals and they also march with us too so that's where that connection comes in okay i also ran security for them at one of those okay but when did, what don't you ever turn it on them and say okay here's your rally and these people and what's your problem it's like do you well i have i had i've had okay. a like june 4th i had a transsexual transsexual speak like i don't yeah. as i don't i don't care what people do in the private i don't care who they yeah. sleep with or who they have relationships with it's not my issue yeah i'm a christian but i don't care you yeah. know it's not my issue i'll work with i'll work with anybody right. that wants to you well know. i mean just just getting these people to if that's their argument if that's all their argument is okay you're racist and you hate okay show me what we did wrong and we'll correct it you know sure. it's like give me the list <laughs> yeah. i mean i don't understand what the opposition is and why people are creating it as a big deal and making it and and where how does it it's, get power how does it get the power it's to do two this two different things you have people that know the truth but are trying to like unions for example i think unions leaders of unions i do think they're afraid of my message um because because they, i mean they don't really know me but i think that they probably assume that i'm against unions which isn't necessarily true i just don't think that you should be forced to be in a union if you don't want to you know there's certain yeah, laws where you're fair enough yeah but you know, and in terms, I mean, you should have a choice. I mean, if yeah. it's if it's such a good deal, as far as I'm concerned, look, if it's such a good deal, and for me, marketing is everything. If if I buy what you're saying, it's because you've marketed it to me, right. and you've you've reached my heart with whatever message you wanted to reach, yep. and I'm willing to support you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you if the union can't do that with its members without forcing them to pay for it, I'm beginning to wonder, hey. Is this such a good bargain? If you gave your members a choice and they decided not to support you, what does that say about you? Absolutely. So yeah. it, it, for me, it's, it's a matter of pointing out these things to the other side. I mean, has anybody ever thought of going and, and picketing the union on, what is it, Burnside? The Carpenters Union that pickets everybody all the time. <laughs> Have you seen them? They've always got the yeah. same message out there. Yeah. It's you dirty rat. You know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, why don't we just go pick at them and say, you dirty rat, you guys are, you know. I think one thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see you guys have more fun. I'd like to see everybody oh, have, have more fun. That's a big part of our okay. thing. Okay, you know, We have, fun. You know? we have okay. lots of fun. That's, and that's kind of part of the things that I preach. Like when we go out there and we go on these marches, it's important to smile and to laugh and to have fun and to let 
let the people who they think they hate us at this moment in time, okay, they think they do because yeah. it's based off of false stuff. But when they see us laughing and they see us having fun, they can't dehumanize us as easily. They see I know. us as people I mean, and they know. see that, you know, it's like, hey, this well, is... One of the things I, I asked you while you were here, and it was, I was really surprised at, that you hadn't heard of 9-11. Okay, 9-11 was sort of what you're doing now back in the day of Ron Paul, way back when, in 2008 and 2012. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, people came together, and it was really good, and there was a large organization, a large group of people, and then all of a sudden it kind of went, mm -hmm. it was Glenn Beck. I think Glenn Beck was behind 9-11. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure uh, that it was... There's a lot I can say on that. Yeah. Idea. And, well, the thing is that there were a lot of people together. You'd think that they would have gotten together and gone and done something else. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the first time. When America Freedom to Fascism was shown, which you probably have never even heard of, probably. Mm -hmm. Right? No. Yeah. Of course not. This is Liberty. You know the Liberty Movement? We're really bad at marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We have the best product in the world, and we can't best even market it. I mean, it's yeah. just like, good Lord, they don't even know about this. But that was, that was the first beginning of it. Aaron Russo put out a movie called From Freedom to Fascism. Mm -hmm. And there were a whole bunch of people that got together that, and yay, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and hmm. there's nothing. So for me, it's great. Everybody wants to gather all the folks, but what's the plan of action to keep people together and get them focused on what's going ahead? It's a million dollar question. So what I'm saying <laughs> is right now, even before you start gathering people, start thinking about what's the plan. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? What do you want to have happen? You know, what's, what's the end? And we talked about that a little bit. What's, what's, what do you want to have happen? What's the big kumbaya, say, in two years? Well, the the... If you're asking me for the solution, that's that's a really big question. That's something I don't have yet. But in terms of what, what drives me and what motivates me, what's really important to me, it is obviously the the I know that you don't like this, but the, the, the term like freedom, okay, getting the government off our backs, yeah, that's really important to me and that's been important my whole <clears throat> life. But I'm i I'm starting to realize now that even if we have the best politicians in the world, okay, who aren't <clears throat> politicians but they go in there because they have to. Okay, and, right. and, and and we roll back all these these regulations and these taxes and these laws, you know, and we stop imprisoning thousands and thousands of people, right. you know. Even if we do that, we still have this this issue with with this cultural thing we have going on right now. Um, we're getting away from respecting each other. We don't respect each other enough anymore. We see people who are differently, and 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 this is this is a problem on all spectrums of the political thing. Okay, it's not just you know one way or the other, but we take these people who are different from us. And we dehumanize them, and we make fun of them, and we degrade them, and we yell right. at them, and we cuss at them. You know, that, that's a problem right now. And I see it, like, people who are supposedly on my side or whatever, if there are sides, tell, they get mad when I reach out to members of who are communists or Antifa or whatever it may be, or socialists, you know. And that bugs me because at a certain point, we have to come together. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I am not, just because I'm treated like trash, I'm not going to treat, even if someone, that's a rule that I have for myself when we go out on these marches, if someone yells at me, cusses at me, whatever, disrespects me, I will not do it back. I'll treat them with respect and I'll treat them as a human and I'll do what I can because the goal is I want people to see me as a human. Right. That's and the that, goal. And that is, that's the whole goal. And and part of it for me is, <laughs> is when you get, you've got people, Right. And you've got leaders, or governors, I mm. call them. I don't call them leaders at this point, governors. They're not leaders, yeah. They're governors. And people think that if you just elect the right governors, and if you just get enough money, and if you just get the right plan, and you just get the right whatever, that everything will be okay. But they keep forgetting the unseen part of it. The unseen part of it is you're still going to have the same voters. So for me, it, it begins with the individual, the populace. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have... A populist that's principled no matter what you do no matter how you organize no matter who's at the top of the feed chain it's not gonna make any difference because yeah. you still have the same base of the pyramid going on yep. so I what I'd like to see is people starting focusing back down on what are the principles of the foundation of the people mm -hmm. what are the the foundational underpinnings of what the people not so much the organization because frankly right now I don't think you can organize without being a target and I'm sure you are already yeah. So, yeah, what's the point of organizing? Why not just do, go out, do something, disperse and go out and do something else? Guerrilla tactics. Well, it's, <laughs> it's the concept of we only organize for a purpose, and then when we're done, we're done. 
Mm -hmm. It's not it, it's not so much guerrilla. It's like organizing for a purpose and then dispersing because you're organizing for other purposes. And mm -hmm. these people aren't going to be these people over here and these people, you know. So it's not a cohesive organization is nothing more than a great giant target. And the bigger the organization, just like 9-11, that's why 9-11 fell apart. Is because there were all kinds of people in there who filtered out the message and filtered out the direction. So if you well, have a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of directions. Yeah, I've, I understand what you're saying. It, I've seen tons of groups rise and fall in the last year, get real huge, yep. tons of momentum. Yep. I've actually stayed away from groups. I've stayed away from members. I've stayed away from, I've had tons of people try to pull me into their groups, try to do this and that. Right. And mm -hmm. I've actually, the one thing that I, uh, a lot of criticism I, I do get is um, I've done absolutely no organizing at all. All I've done is 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 organize me, Patriot Prayer, okay? There are no members of Patriot Prayer. I have people who support me. I have people who've been there for me. I have people I owe my life to, that's for sure. But at the end of the day, um, it's kind of been organic, and it's kind of, I don't even know what Patriot Prayer is anymore. It's just kind of, it's like a, it's just a, it's these two words that people hear it and it sparks emotions. You right. Know? So there isn't actually an organization called Patriot Prayer, because that's, right. that's really the impression that you get from the press. That, that really is the impression. What's so the maybe impression? you need to change that. Uh, the impression that there is an organization called Patriot Prayer. That was the that was the impression I got. All, yeah, all Patriot Prayer is is videos. And it says Joey Gibson from Patriot Prayer. And anytime yeah. you're from something, and there's got to be a something, right? right? Yeah. So that's the and the thing is that I think you should promote that more. I think you should let people know that Patriot Prayer is a concept. It's a vision. It's mm -hmm. not a thing. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. And, and that's what, what it is. And that's what it is. And for me, that's that's the importance of it. Mm -hmm. Because it's not tied to any one person's conceptual vision of where this should go. Right. And basically, there's just the, the underlying pinning of what you want to have happen in your life in the future. Mm -hmm. So Patriot Prayer is your vision of the future. So what we need is a whole bunch of other people with Patriot prayers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that, and that's my goal. My goal this whole time has been to get other people. It's not about getting them to follow me or join me. It's about getting other people to be like, I love what he's doing. I don't. They don't have to agree with me, but they can no. be like, I love his passion. I love the fact that he's going out there. What is it that I right. want to do? What right. do I want to exactly. start? Exactly. Follow your own passion yeah, and your exactly. own prayer. And that's what I've been trying to promote right. this whole time, because I had someone yeah. do that to me. There was someone that I was following for a little bit, and he kept saying. You guys listen to me, but you have to go do your own stuff. Right. By you listening exactly. to me, that does nothing. Yeah, you, you exactly. Gotta, you got to take a step. And so I ended up doing that, and it changed my life forever. And so that's what I want to do. Right. I want I want all these other groups. It's not about competition. I just want no. other groups to rise up because I believe that we have too many. We have a small amount of people who are doing too much. We need <laughs> we need everyone to do something small. Yes. And that's how Yay. that's how we make change. Many that's hands make light work. Exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> like ants, you know? It'd that's, be really nice. Yeah. I'm I'm with you because I'm basically I've been doing a lot for a lot of years and everybody's been saying, Oh, you're doing it wrong. Well great, if I'm doing it wrong, why don't you just step up and show me how? It's the naysayers. <laughs> that's the thing. It's yeah. it, I was just talking to someone about this today. There's a lot of naysayers out there because that's the only way they know how to participate. Right. That's they're only. It's so much easier to be a naysayer because you don't put yourself out there, right? No. You don't take that risk. You don't. No. You don't try things. So the only way you can participate or feel like you're doing something is to just go around and pick everyone apart. You know exactly. what I mean? But but none of us are perfect. We all just gotta try and take that first step, which is the hardest, and right. go do our stuff. You know. Um, so. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, and. Um, Hopefully I can make up for that now. I, I'm assuming we m hopefully had our phone numbers up there. And I don't know whether we have had any phone calls. No. But uh, no phone calls. Oh, you lazy people, please do call in. Give us strife. We want the, we want the exercise. Come on. <laughs> but seriously, do uh, give us a call in. Uh, if you have any questions about free speech, if you want to make a comment, and you want to. We're not doing the phones. No, we're not doing the phones. We are doing the phones. We need a microphone in here. I don't know what you're saying. You sound... No phone. I'm not even religious. We, we will now hold a short prayer for the phones. They're dead. 
We're not having any phones. Man, I'll bet there's a lot of people who are really upset about that. But hey, maybe next week. No. Uh, hopefully we've heard that this is actually going to get aired again next week. So uh, hopefully people will join us on the meetup group and be able to have a few says about what they thought about the program. Us, Joey, where we're going. And I'm just glad you're here, Joey. And I'm glad for what you're doing because you're standing up and doing something. And for me, this has been a big hot button. I've been working a long time and doing a lot, and people say, well, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And it's like, look in the mirror and figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, what do I look like? The Oracle of Delphi? I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? How do you feel? Do people ask you, what can I do? What do you tell them when they say, what can I do? Yeah. Oh, no, I get that a lot. There's two different things. Um, the, the one question I get a lot is they ask, they say, Joey, how can I support you? How can I support Patriot Prayer? You know, like, or a lot of people are like, oh, where, where do I donate and stuff like that? And, you know, I don't accept money. I don't want to mix things, you know. Good for you. And, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just don't kind of, do that. it just keeps my hands clean. And yeah. then I don't have to worry about, you know, all the things that come yes, with that. But anyway, exactly. what I tell them is, 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 is you need to, number one, if you can come out to the streets, if you feel comfortable doing that when we have these rallies, right. come out and do that and, and just support us or share the information. Right. That's one thing you do. The other thing you can do is figure out your own whatever thing that can figure be. Figure out your patriot yeah. prayer. Right. And now that's what basically me, what, it, what it is. But that's the question people say. Yeah, so what excellent. is that? What is that? And I'm like, I don't know. You know that. Yeah, go figure you out your figure prayer. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's a lot of self-reflection. If you believe in God, then pray. If you don't, then meditate. You know, whatever it may be, however you can connect with something beyond yourself beyond what you see in front of you you exactly. got you got to you got to find that you got to resonate with something that's going to give you that that inspiration you know right. and so that's the only thing that I can do for people other than try to inspire them with my speeches and my videos or whatever it may be um, but at the end of the day it it just comes down to like you said the individual that's that's the thing is is we got to take self responsibility we got to believe in ourselves believe in our potential and what we can do right. and that's and that's why, that's the biggest thing I'm going to do when I go up to Seattle, August 13th, uh, Westlake Park. I'm going to talk a lot about do every, get away from the belief that you're a victim. Even if you're in Bye. one of the worst situations in your life, to accept the fact that you're a victim will not help you. It's only going to hurt you. It's going to hold you down. To accept the fact that you're a victim means, is, means that you're making an excuse for why you're never going to succeed. Why you're never exactly. going to continue to do big things. Even if you... I mean, there's people out there who've been put in really bad situations, you know, like maybe they lose their limbs or maybe they become paralyzed or whatever it may be that has nothing to do with their skin color or whatever. But there's people out there who are in really bad situations and it scares them to death to for them to to say that they're a victim. It scares them to death, right? Because they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. They don't want to hand over their fate to something they can't control. Exactly. So. And that's that's the truth. If you give up yourself to your victimhood, if you say, it's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault, right. whether it's a God or it's the state or the rich people or whoever it is, your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your dog, it's not going to get you there. Right. Even and if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you are being held down by some outside force, Yeah. you know, well, then, you don't have to self-identify as a victim. Well, and the thing is, figure out how to get out. You wouldn't exactly. be the first person. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. come on, you're not the first person to get out from under. Hey, you know, there's lots of other people. And that's the other thing. There's a difference between um, uh, putting light on darkness, like exposing oppression, right? There's a difference between doing that and complaining, constant complaining, constant right. whining. There's a big difference. So I'm not, when people say, when, when I go out and I say, don't be a victim, people think I'm trying to say there's no issues, there's no problems. Right. Okay, right. let's, let's think about that for a second. You just said that and it just triggered something in my head. Okay, what can we say? Not don't be a victim, but be, be a hero, a leader, a leader, something, be an inspiration. I would have to think about that because it's because to go out there and say don't be a victim is pretty negative. So I would have to think about yeah. that what word. What do we want to change it to? What do you want to be instead of what do you not right. want to be? Exactly. That's something I have to think about. Okay. That's a great idea that. because it would be a word where it's something to achieve. You know, it's something yeah. to, to go towards. Be a leader. Be a hero. Be yeah. a be a mentor. Be a. But but to do that, it would be impossible to be a victim at the same time. Yeah, That's you can't. Yeah. You can't give and get at the right. same time. It's just impossible. Yeah. And if you're in victimhood, like you said, all you've got is a handful of gimme and a mouthful of much oblige. Yeah. You know, you're just standing there with your hand out. 
exactly. screaming and yelling and saying, hey, poor me, poor me. It's somebody else's fault. Yeah. So you you say you're, you're um, well, can, can we call you faith-based? Is that appropriate or not? I don't see. I'm look. I'm stretching for this because yeah. look. I'm an atheist. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a third generation atheist. So it's mm -hmm. like all oh, mythology to me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And so I'm struggling with trying to find out who people are. It's difficult. Um, so if you want to, if you're asking me what I am, I I, I believe in Jesus. Uh, I here's the thing. Here's how what I think of, of about Jesus. Even if you don't believe Jesus is the Son of God, he had so much wisdom. And he had so much okay. to teach this world, okay? And there's a lot of people who aren't Christians that followed his technique. Oh, yeah. Like Gandhi, you sure. know? Sure. And so I, when I read the New Testament, I feel like I'm connecting with something that I, I can't explain. It's weird. And, and it's almost like when I read, I see images, I see things like, not not like I'm hallucinating, but I just, for some reason, it's like reading a really good book. Yeah. Like you get you into it and you visualize the yeah, images exactly. and stuff and you see the yeah. imaging and stuff. And I experience the message of love and I experience the how much the world hated Jesus except for a small minority you know the world hated him the government hated him the 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 Jews who were um, who were in control of that religion mm -hmm. their, their religion who were corrupt hated him because he was a threat to the establishment. Oh yeah of course. And so I connect with so much you know he was he started a revolution and that's why I look at too many people look when they hear Jesus who don't really they look at him as like they don't see him as like like a badass. Like that's how I see him. Yeah. Like he's hardcore. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you, you would have a lot in common with Barbara Theory out of Australia. She mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Qumran Origins of the Christian Religion. And that is exactly how she saw Jesus, the historical Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. She's one of the few authorities of the Dead Sea Scrolls. She wrote this book, and basically it says, yeah, he was a political badass. Mm -hmm. And that's who she, so you and, you and Barbara get along right royally. We'll actually. have to look that up. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I've got a copy of it. I'll loan it to you. It's, cool. it's, there aren't very many of them here in the United States. People don't have it. But uh, it's very interesting that you say that because, yeah, he was a political badass. He was. And he changed things and said, no, 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 this is the status quo is not going to happen anymore right. for people. We're throwing this out and we're going to have a new regime in here. And he loved everyone. He loved the common person. He loved the, even I always the one story and, you know, everyone knows about the story, but it, it, it really impacts me because people have, uh, in my opinion, twisted the religion, not the religion, the belief. And that's OK. I'm not insulting them. But and, uh, the one thing is, is like. Like, he protected the prostitute from being stoned, you know? Yeah. He drew that line, and he said, you That's know, pretty badass. It is badass. <laughs> I mean, really? And he stood there with her. Yeah. And I think that, and the fact that people don't think about the fact that he pretty much volunteered to be um, nailed to the cross. And he, yeah. he was also, that was, yeah. he was also very scared the night before, you know? And that's another thing people don't think about. Like, he had human emotions. He had that fear. He had that, that, that you know, the fear of, of having things driven through your arms and, and, and hanging there for hours. And he asked God, you know, if there's any other way, you know, to have your will done, let, you know, let's do that. Can we do you it know? then another way, sir? Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, and it makes it, the, the biblical scriptures do paint him as a very human thing. And I think if you read Dr. Barbara Thiering's book, you'll find, I actually thought I poo-pooed Christianity my whole life. I'm obviously. And I really wouldn't have a bar of it, have anything to do with it, except for a slight foray into getting a $300 scholarship. <laughs> but we won't go into that. <laughs> um, and I was all mythology to me, and I didn't care about it until I read her book. Hmm. And then it really catalyzed everything as to what the Christian religion really was historically mm -hmm. and who Christ really was, Jesus of Nazareth, whoever he was what he meant politically and how that all sort of worked out from her perspective. And it's a completely different story. I think you'll find it very, very interesting. And, and it's a very, it's very political yeah. from the get go. Very political. And it doesn't have any of the woo woo in it. There's no woo woo in her book. She explains all of the woo woo in terms of the heritage of the Qumran people mm. in, uh, in that area. So it's kind of an interesting but getting, again, back to, to the free speech of what you're going to be doing in the future, do you, 
with the Patriot Prayer, and I think that is really important for people to start understanding that that's what you're saying, because I did not get that at all. What, that it's not a group? Yeah, no, everything, every tone everywhere, it always just points you well, toward this thing. That's human that nature. Like, yeah, but I wanna, mean, there is They isn't. want to yeah. say what it is. They want yeah. to pin it down, but you can't. I can't pin it down because yeah. I don't know what it is. Well, then you make, it, make people understand that because I think that's super important because it is every person's patriot prayer. Yeah. And that's so much bigger than thinking that you have some silly little organization. Kumbaya, come join me and we'll be happy. Yeah, like they think that there's some sort of like, oh, these are the rules or these, you know, this is yeah. the, you know, blah, blah. We're no, a 501c3, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not yeah. that at all. It's yeah. just it's just an idea and that's all it is. And it mm. just, it grew to certain things, you know, and people ask me what it is. What And that's probably the biggest problem with human nature is they want to be able to classify something they don't understand. It helps with their anxiety. Right. They want to pin it down. Right. Same thing with my beliefs. People are constantly like, Joey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And there's a <laughs> lot of things where it doesn't matter what I believe. Yeah. You know, what matters is what you believe. And so <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of things I won't get into yeah. just because people are per people will purposely ask me questions to divide so that my answer will divide people. Right, exactly. And they try to trap yes. me. They have a special little purpose in asking yeah. you that little question, don't right. they? <laughs> exactly. So there's yeah. a lot of things I won't even get into because it doesn't even matter. I mean, yeah. who cares? Yeah. Um, like, for example, this isn't something that people try to pin me down on, but the, the way that they try to tear apart, like, the whole spiritual thing is they say, do you believe in, in creationism or do you believe in evolution? <laughs> to me, that's the stupidest question in the world because it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. God, right. whether God, whether God decided, let's say there is a God, whether God decided to do it through creationism or evolution, it doesn't matter. No. Who cares? All they're trying to do is divide us with that. Exactly. It's crazy to me. And the fact that that, that even caused debate in our country just shows, you know, that how lost we really are. Well, it's, I don't think we're lost, Joey. I think that we are lost through the, 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 shall we say, the studied effort of a lot of people who want to control a lot of other people. Yeah, I agree. Okay, and so no it's leadership. not, you know, and it's, it, well, I think the time of looking for leadership is over. I'll be honest with you. I think it's the time of, if you want any leaders, I suggest you start looking in the mirror. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, a, but a leader will say that. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's yeah. what we're we have we don't yeah. have any leaders. Like, look at look at all our. I know I know politicians aren't leaders, but you look at all our politicians. None of them are leaders, right? No. They don't talk about they don't talk about morals. They don't talk about hey, let's let's focus on on being honest. Let's focus on being good to people. You never hear that. You don't have people saying you know hey, what can you do to help this country or your community or this and that. We don't have those leaders. And well, they, they, they've proscribed it. We do have them because they have all these little committees for you to jump on and help out and volunteer on and do things for the city. And for, there's, there's lots of ways they like to organize your volunteering through the bureaucracy. Right. I mean, there's a thousand ways they get you to benefit the state by volunteering your yeah. time. And I think people have to really start questioning. I've started confronting some of the volunteers in our neighborhood for the park that's in our neighborhood that is really actually just a weed shed. It's not a park, it's just a bunch of weeds and they come and they tend it every month or so. And I think people have to start questioning where's the energy and where's the money and the time going mm -hmm. for projects that the bureaucracy and the bureaucrats are saying we need and we need to do. And why can't we just give that money back to the people that it was taken from and maybe they can figure out what to do with it for themselves. Yeah. And, and for me, that's that's a big part of it is getting people to question where are you where are your tax dollars going? What are they providing? And really start understanding that there's a lot of printing and a lot of benefits and a lot of toys and a lot of gifts. Go to like the fairs and you'll see all of the bureaucratic agencies will have booths there and they'll be giving out free stuff mm -hmm. and piles of printing and piles of this and piles of that. All that stuff costs money. Yeah. And I think people have to start asking, are we getting benefit for the amount of money that these people are taking out right. and what they're doing with it? And I really applaud you for not going the route of, of having an organizational structure and, and tying yourself to this thing. It leaves it free form to where you can decide where you're going to put your energy out. Why do you think people are attracted to what you're doing? What do you think the, the draw is that they feel? I think that from 
there's a couple things. Number one, the, I would say the biggest thing is being positive. Um, mm -hmm. In this environment that we're in right now, right. especially through the 2016 election and everything that happened after that, there's so much anger, so much hatred everywhere. And um, I think that we've kind of lost ourselves. We got so into the election and it was a buildup of right. lots of things too, yeah. but it's not just the election. It was a buildup to that. But the, le the election and everything, we got so into that that we kind of lost ourselves. And there was so much negativity on the press and the media, social media, everywhere. Just na It's like, you can't, like everywhere you look, there's just negativity. It's crazy. And so I think that when I started, that's what it originated from. From the very beginning, it was about being positive. And it was about focusing on what you love and doing things out of love, not hatred. Right. One of the things I said yesterday in my speech, because it was about um, recall, the, 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 the rally was about recall Kate Brown, but I didn't talk about any of that. I just talked about free speech and love. And the one thing I said is like, if you guys want to take out Kate Brown, it cannot be out of hatred of her or anger towards her or anger of the things she's doing. It has to be out of love for her country, love for your family, love for what motivates you, what drives right. you. And exactly. so that brings people in a lot because they're so sick of of the drama and all that stuff and the i stay anger. away from that the anger yeah it's everywhere and that's you don't have to be that's why i have a lot of people who aren't christians that love my message because i don't throw the bible at people i talk about i i, I talk about things like because jesus is really my mentor but i don't say oh jesus wants you to do this jesus yeah. wants you you know <laughs> i just say hey let's be positive and let's spread love right. which is what jesus did but I don't have to. I don't have to sit there and say, uh, by the order of Jesus. You yeah, know? exactly. And so, that brings people in, whether they're Christian or not. It doesn't matter. And the other thing too, the other thing that brings people in is the fact that I'm going on the streets into the areas that we're not supposed to go. Okay, people look up to that. People respect it. That's why people hate me too. But it's because I'm I'm going to go in the areas like you know June 4th, you know that was without a doubt the biggest rally of that kind in in Portland ever and for I mean for, until I mean that I know of um, and because for the most part people have just given up on Portland people have given up on on Seattle people have given up on these areas because it's so there's so much hatred towards people who believe differently okay yeah. I know Portland's very diverse in terms of what they believe I get that but I'm saying if you if if Portland considers you an outlier in terms of what you believe in your head you're hated and you're and they'll do everything they can to discourage you from coming in and so when we go in there and we bring people who thought they can never do that 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 inspires them and it motivates right. them and so. that i think that and i think that's a big part of it is is empowering people to understand that you do have the power to do the things that you want to do mm -hmm. and you say that you want to do and and what I see, especially in, in people your age, and even especially in the younger ones coming up, the ones who are like 18 and 20 years old, mm -hmm. they've been so schooled to be risk adverse yeah. that I have more risk at 70 than they do. And I'm going, you're supposed to be like out there, you know, yep, and you're behind me. What the hell's mm -hmm. going on? It's like, no, you're supposed to be in front of like clearing that's, the way. That's for done me. on purpose. I know, and it's like, it's insane. You want to make people, if you want to disable people, make them risk adverse. Yep, yep. The people in power, they don't, they don't like people to take risks. They want them, they want them, I, you know, they want them to be unhealthy. They want them to be physically and mentally. Physically unhealthy. They want them to not make too much noise. They just want them to go to work, yeah. right? Buy their I'm products, like, yep. sit home. go home, watch TV watch for eight hours, whatever, go to bed. Little gaming yeah. and then go to bed and be quiet. Get they up. become slaves to the society or yeah. to the people at the top. And they don't make any noise, no problems, no problem, you know? Yeah, and that is basically uh, one of the things that I see that's happening with the immigrants that are coming in. They bring, and I was, we had a couple across the street from us who were brought into the country, so we got to see the whole process. There are literally hundreds of thousands of people who are being brought into this country. They learn enough English to pass the test, and then it goes away. And then they're 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 literally landlocked in these little groups, speaking their own native tongue, and that's basically what's happened to our friends across the street, is now because they don't need to learn the English, even with us across the street visiting them on a regular basis, their language goes away, and so they just meld back into their little group. It's cloistered; they don't ever come out, they don't vote, and they're scared poolless to do anything. Mm. Because especially the Russians think it's Russia, you know, they're not going to stick my head up, yeah, whap. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. they, they're very cloistered in their little groups. And it's, it's not against immigrants coming in because they're wonderfully industrious people and they're great people and they're generous to a fault. It's just they're not going to participate, folks, because they're scared. Mm-hmm. So, I was, do you guys have any ideas, or you guys? Like there's a whole crew of you, <laughs> right? Joey! Have any ideas about what we can do to bring the sort of, you know, non sort of English speaking heritage folks in on the game here? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It kind of, here's one thing that would help. Um, I mean, there's a difference between legal and illegal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the legal, the ones that are legal, that's a different question. I don't know. The ones that are illegal, I do think we need to find a way to put them in the system to where they're registered, to where they don't have to, because that, that's going to play into them hiding too, right? Because they don't want to be kicked out of our country and stuff. Um, I think, I guess it comes down to, I, I really do believe that, um, like, I, I believe that there's, let's just talk about Mexicans, for example. I believe that there's so many Mexicans that are he- here illegally right now that need to be legalized. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay. That's my opinion. And yeah. I think that will help to kind of right. bring them in. And kind oh, but of then also you have to take into consideration, like, I'm a great fan of the seen and the unseen. Okay, when we say words like, let's legalize them, let's turn off the rides first. That's my game. Turn off the rides? Yeah, no more rides. No more free this, no more piles of that, that no more That comes with benefits. legalizing though, right? Because then they well, start to pay taxes and they no, start to they get... Uh, you, you need to be, you need to compensate. Okay, so for me, when you pay, you pay attention. So I don't think it's a free ride. I don't think you should just be able to lob in here ahead of everybody else who has sacrificed like Amjad and Zia did Mm -hmm. and pack their butts off to Turkey for God knows how long in what conditions I don't even want to know about. You're going to tell me you're just going to lob into the country here, folks, and you're just going to come home, host, and you're going to head in the line ahead of Amjad and Zia? I don't think that's, so. That's why we have to streamline so, the process okay, but what of I'm people saying coming is, in the right way. N- well, first and of all, those that are here, no, we just don't open the doors and say, kumbaya, come on in. You need to pay for having jumped no, but, the queue ahead of Amjad and Zia. But we are doing that. We are. Not really. We are letting, that's, that's been done on purpose. We purposely let, let uh, tens of thousands of people in. Um, illegally, we, that was done on purpose well, so right, that all but, these big corporations saying, can hire right, people right, right. under Right, right, but I don't care wage. about why and I'm not going to get into any of that crap because I don't know, neither you and neither does anybody else, why or how or any of that stuff. All I know about is they're here, they're messing up the situation, we need to address the situation, and they don't get off scot-free. That's my terms. That's what I see as the game plan. I see, yeah. Yeah, and it means it. you don't get the bennies, you don't get the, because you jumped the queue ahead of Amjad and Zia. They had a 44 staring them in the face. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, your little thing in Mexico is not a problem, as far as I'm concerned, in comparison to somebody like Amjad and Zia. Mm-hmm. And you should not be advantaged because you decided to jump the queue ahead of them. No, so, uh, yeah, that's so, you, from so, a moral perspective. Yeah, yeah. I how exactly are we gonna saying. how are we going to make them compensate for the fact that they jumped the queue? That's kind of what I would like to see people thinking about. If we want to let these people in, great, fine, bring them on down, make them, give them a stamp of approval, and send them down and give them a number, like but, the rest of us. But I don't want it to be on equal ground with Am Gen Z. I'm sorry. Yeah, but the the I get what you're saying, and that's totally legitimate. But the problem is, is the fact that we have, to, I mean, we have so many people right now that are not being paid minimum wage, and they're not paying taxes, right? But they're getting tons of benefits. That's an immediate problem we have right, right now, yeah. And it's it's hurting our economy, right? So what I'm saying is, so there's a solution, and you're saying you don't like it because it un you know it's it's unfair to other people and that's legitimate I understand that but i'm saying the solution is to <clears throat> people who aren't violent criminals or people who've been here and you know you you know prove themselves that they can be citizens we have to bring them into the system and we have to obviously we have to close the borders and know who's coming in you know but at, at the end of the day we have to streamline the process and there right. can't there shouldn't be any reason why anyone should be hiding from authorities unless they're well, finally criminal. Saying, I'm just saying, why don't we start thinking outside the box a little bit and not and not just assume that it can go one way. That these people are here, okay, we're not going to solve it because we don't have the authority and we don't have the, the sphere of influence to do it. So basically, as you've been talking about, it's kind of silly. Right. Yeah. But from where I stand point, as far as how I treat illegal aliens who are working in businesses that I patronize, mm-hmm. 
which is a problem for me because that's not okay as far as where my money is going. Yeah. So I have to make, you know, a compromise in that regard. But at the same time, I'm also talking to the people who own the businesses saying, look, I understand what's going on here. I'm a libertarian. I'm not about to turn you in because it's none of my damn business. Mm -hmm. However, if you want me to continue eating here, you better show me that these people are contributing something other than your, than your you know, cooking in your kitchen. For cheap. For cheap. Yeah. Okay, so you got to show me that there's there's something happening here, or bye bye. I'm out of here, and I will find another place to eat that does not have illegal aliens cooking my food. Mm -hmm. So I think that people have to start getting creative about how they want other people to be accountable, and and that's what I'd like to see people starting to do. And that's why I think that what you're doing is so powerful, mm. because you are making people be accountable to themselves not to your group, to a, a set of things, to ideas, or a, a plan, or a 501c3. Mm -hmm. You're making them accountable to themselves. And I think that that's the power in your message. Yeah, that's the goal. And, and to have that brought out is really an extremely powerful thing. And I'd like to see you do more of that. We have seven more minutes. Is there anything you think is, that's important to bring up about the rallies, or things in the future about the rallies that you'd like to see the rallies toned out. What do you want people, how do you want people to come to these rallies? Like if I show up on August, I've forgotten already. August 6th. Next, next Sunday. Yep. Yeah. What do you want, how do you want people to show up? Um, well, it's all, you, you always show up, you know, prepared for the worst, but you know. Prepare uh, for the best. No, I mean, let's show, let's have them show up Sorry. and be prepared for everything good. <laughs> um, what I'm, what I'm saying though is it's like, it's always good to, you know, I don't want to say nothing bad will happen. I'm pretty sure nothing will. But at the end of the day, like last March in, in the waterfront, the police decided not to babysit us, which I think was really good because it allowed us to work things out amongst each other. Yeah. I actually think that was the furthest that we ever gone in terms of understanding each other. Right. There was a couple fights, but at the end of the day, when, when people realized the police aren't barging in to separate us, as we marched along, people understood, you know, you have to be careful about the things you say. You know, we need to be more respectful to each other because we don't have police breaking us up. So at the end of the day, by the end of the day, there was like, everyone was talking. People who were supposed to hate each other were talking. Masks were coming All off. All right, there you go. It was go. amazing. That shows you. Yeah. That, that was the key. You. That was the key is that right. like, like we had to work things out together. And, and, and if you think about it, when you march together for so many times over all these, you know, all these rallies and stuff, but this time we're marching around Portland forever, you know, it was several hours. I mean, you begin to see that we're all humans, right? Yeah. Like, but if you have police separating us and you're yelling back and Especially forth. Especially if the police look yeah. like something out of a Gestapo movie. Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. These guys are scary. And they, <laughs> they perceive, naturally they perceive, and I don't, you know, I don't, I understand. They naturally perceive the police there to protect us. That's how they see it. And so that, I'm beginning that to wonder important if they do. Maybe, maybe the idea might be changing, but maybe those guys are, I don't know. <laughs> the, um, yeah, and it's, it's tough for the police because if a huge riot breaks out, then people, you know, insult them for not being there. But then at the same time, when nothing happens, people insult them for wasting their resources, you know, so they're kind of in a... Look, in a I'm kind of, I'm kind of jack of the whole thing of the police being used as, uh... I'm sorry, I find it very embarrassing as a city and, and for the police force when they say, oh, we're going to have another run and it's going to have the police staffing it. And I just go, oh, another run? You know, I'm sorry, but that is just such an inappropriate use of the police force. I'm sorry. For a run? Yeah, you know, they, they have their little, you know, runs Marathon in downtown, something? marathons, oh, yeah. whatever. And they use highly trained professionals to staff corners. I'm yeah. sorry. This is insanity. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, the, you know, you can't, you can't, what, you got to demean your police force by shoving them out on the corner and making them play, you know, stop sign. It's yeah. like, really? Really? I, you'd think that they'd kind of figure it out, that that's not how you get respect for your police force. Yeah. By demeaning them and, and making them do that, and then and then sending them out to be Gestapo black boots, brown boots, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm beginning to wonder about not the police, but the uh, shall we say the leadership of Portland and their ideas of what the police should be doing. 
I don't think the leadership knows because they're 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 torn between the protesters and common sense and all this stuff, you know, because he he the, the mayor has to come across like he doesn't support the police. Otherwise they're they are at his doorstep at well, his house. Well, how about the mayor coming across as a mayor just for a change? Just do what he believes you know? to be right. Yeah, that's what well, he, no. That's his biggest problem though. Is he doesn't he's this mayor Wheeler, he's he's very torn between he has all these people trying to pull him in different directions and he doesn't know where to go. Well, yeah, that's usually called why don't you develop a set of principles and then you'd know. Right. I'm sorry. Then it doesn't matter what people say. Yeah, it doesn't matter who's pulling me in what direction if I have a set of principles. Yeah. yeah, I know where I'm going. I don't know. It's sort of a compass that some of us have. Yeah. Maybe he needs to have a few lessons in, I don't know, having a moral compass. Although, yeah. <laughs> um, enough of the city. I'm hoping in the future that more people like you start deciding to follow your path and become more independent of a group and an organization and follow their path. So is this, when you look into the future, what do you see? Are you, I, I, I don't know. Are you married? Do you have children? Yeah, I'm married. I have a family. You have a family? Two kids. What do you see for your children in the future as far as, do you see that, that this is going to be continuing or do you feel that this is not so much belief because belief is you know whatever I think is happening and there's no I'm, proof but, but how do you feel about what's coming up for your kids so I'm, I'm really putting it in God's hands but in the beginning it was always I never felt like I was gonna do this forever I really truly believed that God wanted me to inspire other people to kind of rise up and to kind of start to do their own things that's how I've seen it. I never see myself as a leader. I've never seen myself to continue to do other things or bigger things or whatever. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. I can see myself organizing things for the rest of my life in terms of, you know, exposing certain corruption or this or that. But at the end of the day, I don't ever want to be a politician. I don't ever want to run for anything. I don't ever want to join a group. Um, I really want to appreciate the time I have with my kids. You know, so it's kind of balancing between these two different worlds of my right. family and this world, whatever you want to call it that I'm in. Because this world can be very dark, you know, that oh, yeah. I'm participating <laughs> in right now. Probably more dark than anything else because there's so, there's such huge consequences exactly. for the society. So, so many, all these agitators come in to try to make me miserable, you know. Um, and so far it hasn't worked, but... Um, if you don't have the right state of mind, this world can tear you apart, right? Yeah. If you don't have your, like you said, principles, if you don't have your priorities in order, it will tear, tear you apart. And so. So, oh, we've got 20 seconds. It's coming up. You guys didn't tie. I guess we're over. Yes, seven, six.